Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda of February 18, 2020, regular meeting as presented. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have approval of the consent agenda items. I'll move to approve the consent agenda items as presented. A second. And a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have public participation. Board members and administrators will listen to concerns and respond when appropriate by mail or telephone at a later date. We will not be able to respond to your questions at this time. The purpose of this session is for us to listen to you and give you the opportunity to share with us. Per policy BDH-1 public participation at board meetings, the following guidelines and procedures will be followed. In order to speak during public participation, a public comment form must be filled out and submitted to the board president prior to the beginning of the meeting. The public comment period will not exceed 15 minutes. No individual will be permitted to speak more than once, and each speaker will be allotted no more than five minutes. I have no public comment form. On to report of the superintendent. Thank you. Um, tonight, we're going to write to the board. Um, we're going to start off with uh, notes of appreciation. There is one really nice note in your board packet. Um, the next item on my report is the enrollment for the last Wednesday in January. Um, so up here, I have three years of data for you to look at. In your board packet, you have data all the way back to 1998. Um, but if you just look at the numbers, when you compare the January count to our September count this school year, we are up seven students. And then if you compare our January count this school year to the count last year, we are actually up 39 students. So, um, of course, you know, enrollment's always a concern, so happy to see that growth there. We're hoping that it stays there, or maybe continues to grow a little at a time, okay? Um, the other enrollment data that I have for you is on preschool. Um, this is something new. We started last year, so I only have two years of data to share and that's all that is in your board packet. Um, if you look at the September count versus the January count, we're up two students. And if you look at January last year to this year, we're up three students. Um, you know, we would love to have more children all the time, um, especially in our early childhood, uh, special education program, and of course, expanding our preschool program. Um, but, you know, limited space, limited resources right now. We're happy to see growth there too. We want as many children as possible in our program. Any questions on that information? Okay. Um, the next item that I have goes along with preschool and kindergarten. We have our preschool kindergarten registrations. Bloomsdale is Saturday, March 28th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. St. Genevieve Elementary is Saturday, April 4th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And finally, on Monday, March 2nd, we will start taking appointments. So um, I believe one of the buildings pushed out a reminder today. Or was it both? I just didn't remember. Okay. okay. The district sent out a notification reminder of one that that's coming up. So we'll continue to remind people. Um, just please help us get the word out. We want, again, as many children as possible involved. If these dates do not work for you, please go ahead and call in, um, and we'll try to work something out for you. Personal reports. So who would like to go first tonight? I think mine is at the top now. All right. <laughs>
we put another little extra special gift in there. Oh, so enjoy and thank you for all you do for us. Oh my goodness. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Been doing 
a lot of um, just acts of kindness for both staff and kids, and she seems to just get noticed for her big heart. And in the upper right, I have to give a special shout out to Brandon Seiberg too. It was actually Mrs. Dent who gave him the referral because he opened the door for her one day when her pants were very, very full, and he's just really, really made such giant gains in being a leader. So we all also have Kaylee Brissett and Andrew Wolf. Okay, this is something that I, I don't know, I just, there's always so much to put in that somehow or other I kind of looked back and realized I really haven't been doing my staff shout out very um, faithfully, so I'm turn over a new leaf, it's a new year, right? <laughs> and so I want to tell you a little bit how we do it at St. John Elementary. So we have this board in our lunch room called Chocolate Cheers Board, and people put positive shout outs up there. So anytime you go in there, you'll see it full of shout outs, and the staff shouts out to each other about all the, the good things they've done. And then we put all of those in a basket, and at the faculty meeting, <coughs> actually, our Sunshine Committee kind of sorts through them and pulls like, um, for example, in um, at the February meeting, Mrs. Shula Woodard had the most in there, and um, but we read them and keep them posted, and then Mrs. Sarah Roth had the most for super staff. So I wanted to shout out for them for this month, and I listed all the, the faculty and staff who, you know, so far this year have been recognized um, as the teacher or staff of the month, but as you can see, many, many people get a nod. There's, you know, people are very generous with their with their kind words. So Mrs. Sheila Witters, um, what ultimately why she had so many notes up there were because she baked all of the cookies for our Habit Leader event, and they were beautiful and decorated like little trolleys and just like our Habit signs, and they were just oh over goodness. the top beautiful. So she had a lot of shout outs for that, so we're gonna thank her for that. And Mrs. Sarah Roth had several shout outs for just being so compassionate and kind and engaging in a relationship, relationship building with her students. She's a better professional in Mrs. Amschler's room. So, congratulations to those ladies. Okay, and just a few odds and ends that I wanted to make sure that we noted this month. Um, in the upper left, we have a really great family action team and every month and they send neat little activities home with the kids to do, and then the parents write different, either a little bit about the activity that they did, or this time around, they have been sending back notes about how their child practices a different habit each week is a different habit. So that happened to be each grade level shouts out and recognizes the kiddos who bring them back, and we put them on a big bulletin board so everyone can read them. But that happens to be a, a group of kids showing their family action team notes, and I just wanted to note that that team does a lot to pull our families into the building and, and recognize the kids for their greatness. Of course, it was the 100th day. I didn't put a lot of pictures in. You get the gist. We do it every year, but <laughs> we celebrated 100th day, and um, finally in February, one of the latest ones ever, and we did a million things that had to do with 100, or at least 100 things that had to do with 100, lots of counting and reading and and that little girl there in the lobby is ringing a bell. We have the children have writing goals. And so as a group, as a grade level, and as a classroom, and as individuals, they're scoring their progress. They know their goal, they measure their, they have their lean measures, and they're keeping track of how they're doing. And the teachers bring out their students to, they put stickers on for like if their, how their class has made on their scoreboard, and, and then they ring the bell. Each student has made their goal for that time period, rings the bell. So ring, well, bell ringing is a good thing in our building. So that little girl, I caught her ringing the bell one day. Um, down the bottom, of course, last week was National Counselors Week, and we so love and appreciate both Mrs. Granger and Mrs. Bloom for the work they do with our kiddos. So we had some celebrations of them. I had to give a little shout out to Mr. Granham, and he does little projects for me all the time, and this is a big project. That's in our gym wall right now. He did a really great job um, painting those silhouettes for us. Mm -hmm. And then finally, in the bottom corner, we're kicking off Kindness Week, and today was um, dressed like your favorite superhero, and there's Mrs. Rutler and a student in their superhero attire. So <laughs> I think that sums it up for this week.
sure it makes me very proud of those kids because some of those kids are not academic students, but and some of them were even behavior students, but they have said this is my calling and they shine and they thrive in their bodies. So I want to shout out to Miss Roland, uh, Mr. King Reed, and Miss Ashley Gettinger for sponsoring that robotics team. They knew nothing about it and they jumped in and said they would do it. So I appreciate that. And the kids and the parents appreciate it. Okay, we had um, Kindness Week last week and we had fourth grade kindness leaders that met with Miss Roland. They gave up about eight of their recess to plan and come up with all these ideas for Kindness Week and they went on a community service day to give back to the community. They went to the hospital. They went to um, one of the nursing homes. They went to, um, and the Laborde, Laborde Exchange. They went there and helped organize the clothes and clean up and they played games with the people at the residential care center and um, then they met at Common Ground and then they walked across the street and had lunch at Cyril's, but we got all kinds of compliments from uh, those places on our students, how well they did and how much leadership they showed. So I was really proud of them because they gave up their own personal time and they came up with all of those ideas themselves. So we're trying to give more student voice to things. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we come up with ideas and then pass it down to the kids, okay, you do this and you do that. <laughs> but when we let them plan, they come up with awesome ideas that we didn't even think of. And then we had Kindness Week. Um, there were all kinds of acts of kindness, like one classroom would go sprinkle kindness on another classroom, <laughs> or they would pass things out in the hallway. Um, we did kindness bingo on the intercom. They, uh, the kindness leaders, the fourth grade kindness leaders, they came up with, they would sell raffle tickets for pies in the face, and that paid for their community service project for the day. And I thought it was cute, those two down at the bottom, they were the chef of the pie, <laughs> and they put the whipped cream in the pie pan. And so they made a whole like, show of it with the pie. Um, our um, teacher's aide, Miss Dunnigan, made that big bulletin board that says be the eye and kind. She is awesome. She goes above and beyond with her call of duty. So I'm so glad we got her. <laughs> and then we had National Counselors Week. Thursday night in March. 
March. So we're going to have it one and two and have it three and four each Thursday night. And we have about 10 families signed up, which is better than last year. We only had two. So we're spreading it out a little bit so we can get more families in. And I think it's going to be uh, a nice turnout because we're going to have the kids help teach those habits those nights. Mm -hmm. So it'll be neat. Um, and then we have pre-K registration coming up and kindergarten registration coming up. Skyping of an author is pretty neat because um, we're going to do it together with mm -hmm. St. John Elementary, and that's a picture of Jessica Yu, and she's explaining it, and she's so <laughs> awesome. That's that's why I love her as a librarian. She gets them excited about books and things. So, and I had probably 50 other things I could have listed, but I think. <laughs> concert, which, uh, like uh, they said earlier, <laughs> had to be postponed one, once or twice because of unpredictable weather. Uh, at the top right are our Spelling Bee finalists who got to compete at North County. Gavin Amlong there on the, he's the gentleman on the left, the tallest guy there on the left. Uh, he was our local winner, and they went on, and unfortunately, they didn't place, but did an excellent job of, of representing us at North County. And at the bottom right is Mrs. McClinn's math team this year, and I want to share with you some of their compliments. Uh, Gavin Gegg placed first on the target test, and Millie Huffman placed second on the target test, so we cleaned out the top of that. And also our team test, including Ethan, Millie, Marlena, and Vivian, took second place overall. And Mrs. McClinn is terribly excited this year because she took eight kids with her, and eight kids are advancing. So she was really thrilled with that, and of course, we all were. We thought that was pretty cool. Um, at the top, a couple new additions to the Dragon family, Baby Hayne on the left and Baby Keenel on the right, who is home today, by the way. Isn't that exciting? Uh, at the bottom left, there are some of our students who got to participate in Unified Basketball. At one of our home games this winter, that was exciting, and I really want to say hats off to everyone who has a part in that, and it really takes uh, a, a big team of people in order to put that together, the volunteers that go out on the court with these students, the referees who volunteer their time to stay out on the floor, uh, Mrs. Clayhorn, of course, the parents. It takes, it takes a lot to pull that off, and it's really a, a very special time uh, when we get to see that, and especially when we get to host that. And then on the bottom right there are some of the positive office referrals, and those are from December leading into January. And then the next slide are uh, the current ones from January into February. Also, we've had uh, two different Spotlight Awards uh, in January of Mr. Elders, who's there on the left. Um, lots of comments about how funny he is, uh, how exciting he is for the students. He's got this great personality and belly laugh that just <laughs> makes people comfortable, uh, makes people have a good time around him, and that's true of, of teachers, of students, of parents, of everyone he comes into contact with. Uh, and his uh, peers wanted to recognize him. And then this month, uh, just a few days ago, as a matter of fact, uh, our faculty named the whole nurse's office um, to receive the Spotlight Award. Kathy Eisenbeis, Gina Lytle, and Mariah Ritter. Uh, and a lot of the comments that we had were about how much they do beyond just taking care of the health of our students and how much they contribute to the building uh, and their care and compassion, of course, which we all know is uh, so essential for nurses. So what's ahead for us? As I said, busy, busy, busy. Um, we have Kagan training. We're hosting a Kagan training on campus tomorrow out in the pack. We have about 30 people registered for that. Many of those are St. Jen employees from all across the district, but we're also um, opening it up and we have um, teachers coming in from other districts as well. Um, SGMS Trivia Night is February 28th. Uh, that is for the students. It is a fundraiser. 
um, and it's being sponsored by Student Council. And we already have several teams signed up for that, so they're very excited to work on putting that together and coming up with middle school teenager questions. <laughs> and uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun seeing that come together. Also, Mr. Draper's been working on fifth grade visits, and now that Mrs. Meyer is back, um, she's been pitching in on that as well. I can't tell you how happy we were to see her come in last week and get settled in, and uh, this first day she was back I already had work for her, <laughs> and she was glad to have it, I gotta tell you. Um, she was happy to get back in the groove with us. Also, of course, budget planning this time of year. Um, we've already start, started talking with the faculty about uh, math preparations, and then also uh, next week we'll have our first meeting of the Principal's Advisory Committee that I put together just as an extra conduit to get information into me and back out. Um, it seems like sometimes we get hung up in the monthly meetings, and I wanted something that could fall in between so that people could talk to me about things and I could talk to them about things. So I've asked the head of each department to come together into one committee and communicate with me. Uh, about questions, about ideas, concerns they may have. Also, it gives them a chance to peek behind the curtain and see what kinds of things Kristen and I are thinking about and working on for the future as well. So we'll have our first advisory committee meeting next week, and those folks have been great about volunteering and, and coming in to, uh, to communicate a little more with me. So hats off to them. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. As you can see, I am not Mr. Haney, so if this goes well tonight, I'll take the compliments. If it goes bad, I can give the compliments to him. Um, as far as pictures go, yes, I do recognize that we have the same individual in the front on the left and the right. Uh, his name is Gabe. For those of you guys that haven't been down to Common Grounds in the morning, get down there and see Gabe. Uh, if you guys haven't been out on their uh, social media page, get out there. Uh, and check that out. Gabe's always got a recommendation on a drink that's out there or something <laughs> along those lines. Um, I put Gabe up there because, uh, and I'm going to talk about the ski trip that our PE classes went on, uh, but he really embodies a lot of the, the excitement that our students had uh, in getting an opportunity to be able to go. And then I also put the picture over there on the left with Mr. Schwint. Uh, Mr. Schwint actually got an opportunity to go on that trip, and I'll explain a little bit of, of why I have him there uh, in that engagement piece with him here in just a minute. I want to start with FBLA, uh, our Future Business Leaders of America. They uh, went to the district competition, uh, and I actually had a little insight because one of the judges that was at that competition was my father, uh, and he spoke nothing but high remarks and high regards for all of our, our, for all of our students that were there that were competing. Uh, he had a special recognition. Uh, he was blown away by uh, Katie Beck. Uh, said that her public speaking skills and the way that she handled that were just second to none. So uh, he had nothing but good things to say about her. Um, I talked to Mrs. Bader and she uh, was just blown away at how well that our students did at the competition. Matter of fact, she actually went to Mr. Haney uh, and it actually asked him uh, if we were going to be able to send all of these students to the state competition. It's, it's larger numbers than what we've had. Uh, and she was worried about budget, and he said, we'll figure it out. If, if we've got that many kids going, we'll, we'll make it work. We'll figure out how that's, how that's going to play in. Uh, but she was super excited. Um, Mrs. Bader on the top and then Mrs. Henderson, both of them do a phenomenal job with our students uh, and, and they provide great opportunities for them. They prepare them for these competitions, uh, whether that be in, in the class setting um, or extracurricular work uh, outside of the class. And then over on the right, uh, we actually have Hannah Reeves uh, is on the far right. She was elected as the District 12 Vice President of Communications. Uh, and then uh, to her left is Annie Yang, and she was elected as the district parliamentarian. So we're definitely very excited and very happy for those two young ladies as well. Um, the district competition placers, all of those individuals placed uh, in the top four of a given category. So that gives you guys kind of a, a perspective uh, of where they finished and how they competed at the district level. Our wrestlers. Uh, I actually had a unique opportunity with our wrestling team. I actually got... Uh, the privilege to be able to go to the girls district wrestling and supervise there, but then also the boys on the last two Saturdays. Uh, and I'll start with the girls. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, the girls wrestling, uh, brand new, it's been around now, this is the second year that we've had girls wrestling. There is no classifications for girls wrestling. They're all lumped in together. So our girls are wrestling against girls from uh, Eureka and Rockwood Summit. I mean, we're talking about really, really big schools. Um, and so our girls go to the district competition uh, and they finished in third place. 
uh, you can see uh, the, the placements there. Uh, Maggie Miracle was our uh, sole district champion. I know Kaylee Gross wrote, wrestled a girl that was in, uh, I believe, like the top three in the nation uh, that she wrestled in the district championship. So, uh, you know, just it's, it's incredible to watch these girls and watch them compete um, and, and to see what they can do. So I got an opportunity to go to Hillsboro uh, and watch that two Saturdays ago. Uh, and the boys had an opportunity to compete uh, at St. Clair uh, this past weekend, uh, and they finished in fourth place, uh, and the state qualifiers are over on the right-hand side with Jacob Dickens and Gavin Gross both finishing as district uh, champions. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to watch these athletes compete. It was a lot of fun to sit with their parents as these athletes were competing. Uh, one mom even took it upon herself. Uh, there's apparently uh, in Iowa, uh, they have some wrestling competition where parents actually get to go and actually are wrestling. So she's recruiting all of our wrestling moms to go with her to Iowa to compete uh, in some wrestling competition with against other moms. So it was very entertaining. She was going around and was trying to recruit these other moms. And, <laughs> and I bet she got all of them. Right? And she, she, was, she got eight. She was oh able to get eight, eight parents. Well, uh, at least we'll, we'll see how many actually. <laughs> they may have been saying that to, to yeah. get them moved on. <laughs> Uh, FFA, uh, this organization, and, and I've gone ahead and asked, put asterisks next to the students uh, that are qualifying for the state competition. So you can see uh, Ms. Richie Dunsey has several individuals that are moving on to the state competition. These are the district uh, award winners. Uh, and she, once again, was blown away by how her students uh, competed, uh, even to the fact or even to the point that she sent an email to Mr. Haney and myself requesting uh, one of us to come up to uh, the state FFA competition to, to see these students uh, get their recognitions. Uh, she said it's one of the biggest groups that she's ever had that's made it to that level. So she's super excited for that opportunity uh, to, to be able to do that. Um, over on the right hand side, uh, Virginia Aikens was recognized as the Area 15 FFA treasurer, and then Kyle Nagger is actually going to be competing in a star placement. Uh, category up at the state competition as well. So he's going to be traveling there. Um, I was really impressed with Kyle Nagger and Katie Chapman. Uh, both of those two uh, came to Mr. Haney and myself, uh, I guess it's been about a week, week and a half ago, and they pitched this idea about drive your tractor to school. Um, and it's part of the, the national FFA week. Uh, and so they pitched this idea to us, and of course we have lots of questions. <laughs> and for every question we had, they, have it. they had a very good answer for so at the end of this month, uh, the, our students are actually going to be participating in the uh, Drive Your Tractor to School uh, day. Uh, I believe it's February 28th. It's a Friday. Um, so for those of you guys that are around that would like to come see that, I think they're going to meet. The initial game plan is that they're going to meet uh, out by uh, the Yanks and drive in from the Yanks. Uh, and they're going to drive and we have a spot out back that they're going to park and be able to do that. So for those of you guys that are around that would like to see that, please Friday, please come out Friday. the 20 to 28. That's it. About what time do you think they'll get to school? Um, oh, fun time. They're, they're, leaving, <laughs> they're leaving the park around 7.30. But they're parked right here, right? Yes. Yeah. They're going to park out behind, out behind the pack. Can they do a lap by preschool? <laughs> <laughs> uh, our weekly shout outs. We, we're continuing to do our shout outs uh, with our faculty and staff. Um, up at the top right, uh, I don't know if Bailey can see this or not, but apparently her dad came into oh. Dr. Etherton's uh, nutrition and wellness class and uh, actually was teaching them how to make his world famous gumbo. I've never had the gumbo. Is it good? It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> 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 so Mr. Otto was, was in. Uh, Grace Robertson is doing amazing things uh, with our speech and debate team, uh, and Ms. Turner uh, had a shout out to her. The group in the middle, uh, they are part of our first group of students that are participating in what we call studio art, uh, where they are spending uh, three, four hours with Mrs. Bowman, uh, and they're completing big projects. They have a big block of time that's blocked out, um, and so they're working on uh, various different projects. Uh, with, within that studio art program. So that's been really neat to watch that take off and watch that run. And then down in the bottom right hand corner, and uh, his name is Travis Overly. He's a graduate of ours. Uh, and Mrs. Murr shouted out to him. He actually was in the building. Uh, and actually, Dr. Fleet was walking by when he was in the building. And we all kind of had an opportunity to talk to him 
Uh, and so by the time he got down to Mrs. Murr's room, he was out of time to be able to talk. So the young man came back the next day, uh, and she actually blocked out some time for her students to listen to him uh, and about the world experiences and the world travel that he's had uh, through, through the Marine Corps. So uh, it, it's really, really neat to see that. I have a special tie with him. He actually was in my advisory class um, whenever I was in the classroom. So uh, pretty neat to see him come back and uh, get back to, to the school and have those conversations with our young people. And then finally, our ski trip. Uh, and this event actually took place today. Uh, and so I went to Mr. Schwint this morning and I said, hey, I've got you guys up on the board presentation, but I've got to have pictures. And so <laughs> I, I reminded him when I got down there today. And so I hadn't seen any pictures come through about 1030 this morning. And so I was getting a little nervous. I have this blank slide that's out there. And I'm like, are we going to get any pictures? So I sent him a reminder. Uh, and he's like, funny that you say that because I was just getting ready or I was just taking some pictures. Well, then another couple hours had passed and I still hadn't seen anything. So I was getting a little nervous. Uh, and then all of a sudden I had uh, like 35 pictures rolling. He just kept sending me pictures. Uh, but it, it brought a huge smile to my face. I shared these with Mr. Haney today. Uh, it was really awesome to see our kids uh, going up to Hidden Valley and really enjoying this. Uh, it's part of our PE uh, group uh, and they schedule this trip every year. Uh, Jess Ballard is usually the one uh, that's behind this this year. She couldn't go, uh, but she was down there. It was still really neat. She was down there this morning taking role, going over the ins and outs with all the kids uh, and sharing with them you know, exactly what to expect when they, when they got there, um, how everything would work, how everything would run, uh, how they would bring them into certain rooms, and then they would give them a, their attire, and then they'd move them into the next room. Uh, so she had them all prepared, uh, and it was really neat. Uh, Mr. Schwent got to go today. Mr. Schweiss uh, went. Coach Sherry, uh, so we were very well represented with our faculty and staff, uh, and, and our kids just, they, they had a blast. I got videos from Mr. Schwent going down the slope, and uh, he sent Mr. Haney and myself a text before we got in here this evening, uh, and I just wanted to share just a, a couple little snippets from that. Uh, he thanked us for the opportunity to be able to go and just experience this with our kids and engage with our kids. Um, he said it really meant a lot to him, and he said one of the students said, it was a great day. And he said, you know, those are just so simple words and terminology, but he said it meant a lot, that that was something that, that made an impact on that kid. Um, and, and he goes even further, he said, you know, it was really awesome to hear the kids say, hey coach, will, will you go down with me? Hey coach, why don't you do this? Hey Mr. Schwent, do, what, will you ride the ski lift with me? And he just thought that was so cool because we have teenagers, and a lot of times you go places like that and the last thing that you expect is a bunch of teenagers want to spend time with their teachers but it was quite the opposite for him today. And he, he felt like that was very, very powerful. And, and I felt like I, I needed to share that with you guys tonight. So with that being said, that was our ski trip. Uh, and that's what we have going on in high school at this time. I'm going to turn this over to Bailey. I think she's going to talk about the polar plunge. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, This community event is a fundraiser to support our student athletes and their Special Olympics activities and inclusion opportunities throughout the school year. We invite everyone in the community to come join us for fun, whether you're taking the plunge or you're just coming out to eat some lunch and spend some time together. Because in St. Genevieve, that's what we do. We're a community. And this year, we're leaving for a reason. So come on out to the third annual Polar Plunge. We're going to be at the Lake Forest Marina. Registration is going to start at noon and plunging is going to start at 2. Plungers are going to enter the water in heats of 8 or less. Bring some lunch money because scooter burgers are going to be there. Saints Till Friday is going to be providing some jams for us. And if you're interested, you can contact Kyle Schweiss or myself and we can email you the packets or we can deliver one to you personally so you'll have those ready at registration. 
Hello, I'm Nolan Klump and I'm the president of Friends Club here at St. Genevieve High School. Friends Club is a group of young teens in our school that come together and show inclusion throughout our community and are friends with everyone. This Polar Plunge event is sponsored by the Friends Club and also the St. Genevieve County Community Center. And here are how your donations will be used. If the fundraising goal of $20,000 is reached, Special Olympics coach Christy Claiborne and Superintendent Dr. Julie Fleek will take the plunge with the rest of the plungers. If sponsors would like to have their name displayed on the shirt, they must register by February 12th. Sponsorship will be listed according to donations. Hope to see you there. People are told all the time what they can't do and what they don't do well. And for people with disabilities, it's 100 times worse but not with Special Olympics. In Special Olympics, they find what you're good at and they encourage you to be better. Special Olympics isn't just about sports either. It's about inclusion, community, teamwork, growth, and leadership. Be sure to use our hashtags on social media too. Hashtag leave it for a reason and hashtag SG Special Olympics. Singer and I went to Jeff City last Monday. Yeah. Last Monday, just to advocate for uh, public schools, and um, there's a change in leadership uh, with the education committees up there. So there's a little bit of change in attitude, belief, yeah. uh, as far as using public money for charter schools, tax credits, vouchers, things of that nature. So if anyone wants any information, please feel free to talk to us or uh, I can set you up with some information online also because a lot of that will take money away from public education and that's not what I would like to see. I'm not speaking for anyone else here, uh, but uh, I, I think most of us are on the same page. That's my bit for today. And we got to talk with some legislators, legislative things. And the, uh, Margie Van Dieven was there. She got to talk to us. So spoke with all three of ours, so. yeah. and they are on the same page with us, right. so that's good. That's all I have. Next we have Unfinished Business, Instructional Program Presentation Preschool. Yes. Thank you. 
share? Or it looks like it's working. I think it's okay. It, I think it was on the slideshow. Oh, on the video. video. Okay, so we might have to share something with you, Dr. Flynn, to give you access. Um, okay, so I'm Bethany Ketting. I'm the Early Childhood um, Coordinator. And then Rosa Nicole, which you guys introduce yourself. I'm Nicole Shank, Bloomsdale Preschool teacher. And I'm Rose Kreitler, St. Genevieve Elementary Preschool teacher. And we're here tonight to talk to you about um, the preschool programs here at St. Gen. I'll let you guys share. Okay, so um, we're going to make it pretty quick. Um, we are currently licensed um, through the state with DHSS, which is the Department of Health and Senior Services. Um, we have been licensed for five years now. That's how long the program has been in place. We also have met um, a Missouri accreditation, and we've had that for the past two, three years. Um, so we have to meet high standards to get to that point, and we've been able to maintain all that. Um, we offer, through our program, since we cannot go off campus, because we don't have transportation um, options, we bring people to us. So um, we've done different things like um, the butterfly lady has come and she actually brings in butterflies at different stages, um, caterpillars. And then we have the firefighters come. Um, hand washing, county health comes in and they do some, some activities with us. In the past, we've had the Magic House come down. Um, in March this year, it seems like they have filled up quickly. So next year, we're going to request them like in August, maybe. <laughs> um, we've had Dr. Lloyd's office come and do um, dental programs with our kiddos. I'm sure I'm missing something, but we have a lot of a lot of things. Um, as you'll see in, if we can get the slideshow to work. Um, as you'll see in that, we also have in the past pumpkin patches at each facility. Um, some years they work out great, some years they <laughs> flop, and we have to bring pumpkins in and throw them in the grass. Because <laughs> don't they don't care about <laughs> the pumpkins. So um, this past year, mine was turned out great. That was probably the best. It, oh, it not probably. It was the best it ever turned out. I placed pumpkins in a field, and they didn't know me differently. So. <laughs> Like 
there's been some kids on our waiting list who weren't getting into preschool before they go into kindergarten, so we want to make sure that we're addressing as many of the kids as we can. So we're going to get them when they're four, and if we have room for three-year-olds, we'll pull them in as well. Um, so hopefully we're not letting any kind of slide by on our waiting list in that sense. Um, we're also excited to offer part-time options next school year. We send surveys out to our families every year to kind of get a, an idea of what their needs are. A lot of families are wanting to only bring their kids maybe for three or four days a week, so we are offering either three-day a week options or two-day week options. So it works out better for the families and it also allows us to work with more kiddos. Instead of taking 20 kids each, um, I, I, right now I have 24 for next year, I believe, and I think Rose has 22. So we're able to catch a couple more kids that way as well. Um, and just flexibility with logistics. Like Rose mentioned with licensing and accreditation, um, we're under some pretty tight restrictions with things that we're hoping with that flexibility we can just make more improvements to our programs. So. Okay, and then we have just a look inside our classrooms. Um, there's some pictures on here from both of our classrooms. It just kind of shows some of the things that we do with the kiddos throughout the day. So we're excited about that. 
And so the numbers are great, but you know it's hard. Some, it's hard to make those phone calls to the the 42 families. Some of them, some of those families have decided to stay where they're at or whatever. But um, the majority of them are still waiting on my list of those 42, and it's it's difficult calling those parents and telling them, unfortunately, we don't have a spot this year. Um, the need is just that. Ladies, how important would you say it is to further academic and social and emotional success in life to participate in preschool or parents as teachers? Or it's very it's important, special. especially the social. I mean, one of the biggest indicators of success in life is not reading and writing. It's important, but it's whether or not you have social skills. And you think about that even if you work at home. You have to call and talk to someone at some point in time, or you do video conferences or something. You have to have those social skills to be successful. Um, but even the academic part is extremely important, especially with what kindergarten teachers and first, and you know, it kind of rolls up. But I see those poor girls stress out all the time, and sometimes I'm like, thank God I don't teach kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's really important if they don't have a good preschool background. Um, automatically that person when they walk in the door in kindergarten they're they're not on a good foot. So we had a I kindergarten also, teacher just tell us that she can tell who's been in one of these two ladies classrooms. So they're definitely preparing them for kindergarten and the conscious discipline and the play based learning that they do with them um, is just it's amazing and it's it's really critical to be successful in kindergarten and come in with that upper hand of already kind of knowing the expectations and they work with transition to our kindergartner, our preschoolers will get to go visit kindergarten um, starting soon and meet some of the teachers and see the classrooms. And so they'll have that advantage too. They'll kind of know those expectations and have those familiar faces when they start kindergarten. I was also going to add, um, I think that the preschool programs are also giving the parents a really great um, first connection with the schools. Mm -hmm. um, we do parent-teacher conferences twice a year, so we're um, updating them a little bit more as far as where their child is um, developmentally, but also when the parents are bringing them in every single morning, I wouldn't trade those interactions for anything because it's huge and it's allowing us to make a great connection with the parents too before they're daily. sending their kid in to people they don't know. So yeah, we do kind of have daily conferences, which is really mm -hmm. great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. school calendar for 2020-2021. So I got asked out to a, a copy of the school calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you have one usually in your board packet, but I wanted to go ahead and give you the paper copy.
provided comments, and in those, there were multiple comments about a variety of things, sometimes. Um, but the biggest comment that we received about the calendar was something like, looks good, great, I really <coughs> like it. Um, and we received 30 comments of those 71. So I was happy to see that. Um, the thing that I really liked to see was the second largest comments that we received, and that was to the committee. Um, we had people just in their comments thanking the committee for all the work that they did to get this calendar in shape and in compliance with the new requirements of the start date. Um, and if you go down through there, there's one comment here or there. Sometimes there's two. And we looked at some of these things, but it was difficult to make some of the changes without drastically changing another area in the calendar. So the committee decided this was a good starting point. Um, so they left the calendar the way it was. So I'll just run through it one more time. I know I did last month, but I'll go through it again. Um, August 1st through August 9th will be the mission bid period for activity, summer 2020. Um, new teacher PD days will be on August 12th, 13th, and 14th. Um, Bloomsdale and St. John Elementary will have their new student registrations on the 10th and 11th, with middle school and high school registrations on the 12th and 13th. Um, all employees will have professional development days on the 17th and 18th. Teachers will have a work day on the 19th, with um, Bloomsdale Elementary, St. John Elementary, pre-K and kindergarten open houses that night. Then on the 20th, teachers will have a professional development day that evening being uh, open house for grades one through five at both of our elementaries. First day of school will be on Monday, August 24th with the middle school open house on Thursday, August 27th. Um, September 2nd will be St. Jim High School's open house. No school on September 4th. Um, that's that 61 yard sale. Um, and then Labor Day is on September 7th, so we will not have school on that day. Um, homecoming will be on September 25th against Fredericktown. October 23rd will be our mid-semester grade check with um, early dismissal on the 29th at 1 p.m. and parent-teacher conferences will be held from 1.30 to 4 with a lunch, with a dinner break, and then 5 to 8. There will be no school on August 30th. Uh, <laughs> October 30th. I was thinking Halloween. <laughs> October 30th, there will be no school. November 11th, no school on Veterans Day, which is the middle of the week on a Wednesday, but we always take Veterans Day off and honor our veterans, so we will do that. Um, November 25th is an early dismissal at 1 p.m. to start Thanksgiving break. And there will be no school on the 26th and 27th for Thanksgiving. Then when we get to December, December 18th is um, an early release day at 1 p.m. to begin our Christmas holiday. We, co we come back on January 4th. And then the end of first semester will be on January 8th. No school on January 18th for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. No school on February 12th for uh, Teacher Professional Development Day. And that will be a large professional development opportunity with um, Jefferson R7, Crystal City, and Herculean. Am I missing anybody? So we're still working on that, but the four, us and those three districts are going to do something together. Um, I believe they did something this year. Um, we did not have a date that matched up, so we'll work and, and get that straightened out next year. Um, so no school on the 12th for that February 12th for the professional development, and then no school on the 15th because it's President's holiday. Uh, March 12th will be an early dismissal at 1 p.m. for teacher and paraprofessional PD day. March 17th is the mid-semester grade check with March 31st um, at 3 p.m. Easter break start. Classes will resume on Tuesday, August, April 6th, sorry about that, from Easter break. Um, right now in this calendar, the last day of school will be May 21st. 
with graduation on May 22nd um, and the teacher PD day on the 24th. Um, this calendar does have five makeup days built into it. So the last day that we could possibly go to school would be on May 28th, which is the Friday before Memorial Day. What happens if we have, we're only gonna make up five days? Yes. The rest of the hours that we have to do make, make up are actually built into the calendar. So you're required, if you look under that May 31st, you're required to go to school 1,044 hours. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually going 1,114.5 hours. So if we go beyond that five days, we're required to make up a total of 60 hours. If we go beyond the, those five days, we're, we'll take it out of the total hours. Most school districts are doing that now. They're not putting makeup days at the end.
get everything in hopefully before April 15th. Um, so we have a better understanding of where we're at. Um, changes that you'll see is the positive adjustment happened in the operating fund, funds, fund one, fund two. Um, there was also a positive adjustment to the debt service and again the capital projects were at zero. So really what contributed to lowering that deficit spending was again the uh, revenue projections of <coughs> contingency funds and then really the people who stepped up and gave me back some money were the building principals so I have to tell them thank you. <laughs> um, appreciate them you know, keeping the purse strings pretty tight and uh, making sure that what they're buying is really needed. Um, and on this amended budget we can't do this without Chris Renner. Um, she keeps everything straightened out and her knowledge of school finance is amazing. Um, so, so fortunate and glad to have her on board helping. So, that's the information that I was going to present. Um, in the budget packet, I'm sure you looked through it. Um, you see on March 1st, we have very large debt service payments coming. Yes. So this large debt service payment um, is the 6.8 million refunding that we did two, three years ago, three years ago. Um, so it will be paid on March 1st along with our other payments. So that money is gonna go out and actually pay up the debt. And then um, the very last page, page 79 is the totals. If you've taken a look at that, that's where I was talking about you know, fund one it's, a, it's a more of a positive balance and so on. I move to approve the amended budget for the 2019-2020 school year as presented. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Set years and years ago, and then we have these, these random targets that we set. 
And um, he brought up a good point that maybe we need to look at those targets and maybe go on the state averages and maybe 20 points above the state average or a certain percentage above state average. So I'm going to write that down for next year and have the committee discuss and set some new targets um, for our district. Because, you know, in some of them we would, we would be over, we would be uh, hitting the target if we were 20 points or 20% over. But there are other, it just pushes us a little bit, I feel like. I, I think that's going to be a good move. Um, and then if we get into the goals, there are, there are five different sections. One group took goal one and goal two, another group took goal three, another group took goal four, and the last group took goal five. In, in goal one, um, we had one addition, and that's what the little plus sign means. Um, and the S4A6 in parentheses right there stands for strategy four, action step six and then strategy five, action step three. Um, they had a suggestion to add RTI. RTI was missing from those um, action steps, so I added that in there. Um, in goal two, uh, we added our school resource officer and school home coordinator to strategy four, action step three. Um, we added some leader and knee indicators to strategy four, action step one. In goal three, uh, we added a career day action step um, that was new at the elementary level. They, they just implemented that and it was going really well, so they thought it was appropriate to add that. Um, so we added a career day, um, strategy seven, action step one. We added a college and career um, language to strategy seven, action step four. And then in goal four, we added keyboarding skills to strategy two, action step three. Um, we removed the, some reference, and I think it was the entire action step for a media center curriculum. That's kind of evolved. Um, Mrs. Staffan has done a fantastic job with the library and, and what that looks like in there, and so this was a bit antiquated, so um, they suggested we take that out. Um, we added um, some language referencing our school portal and some textbook online resources. Um, the traditional... Um, teacher applying for textbooks and purchasing textbooks um, sometimes is still applicable, but the majority of the time it's more of an online textbook or more purchasing online resources um, with some supplemental resources um, to aid their curriculum. So we added that language in, in goal four. Goal five, we added department groups. Um, in fifth grade, they do some department compartmentalizing they thought it was appropriate to add that in preparation to get those kids prepared for middle school. That was strategy two, action step two. Um, added some band recruitment language. Mrs. Elders goes down and does a fantastic job with those elementary kids. That's strategy two, action step 11. Um, they wanted to add the student-led conferences. Um, that was at the elementary level as well. Um, having parent-teacher conferences and having those students actually lead those conferences. That was action, sorry, Sorry, strategy four, action step two. And then finally, we added uh, an entirely new action step under strategy six, action step one, uh, because last year at this time, Mrs. Otto was not with us. We did not have a communications director. Um, so we added some language in there about her um, bringing our message together and making sure it's coherent. Um, so those were the major updates. Obviously, we had some minor language updates here and there, um, you know, syntax and commas and, and stuff like that, but um, it, it was a, a great process. Once again, I want to thank the committee for all their work. Um, they're giving up family time, six o'clock on an evening, and usually takes you know anywhere from an hour to two. Um, so really enjoyed the process and asking that you approve those, those changes to our comprehensive school improvement plan. Any Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have action on the roofing bid.
elementary is actually the roof over their gym. Um, we've made the decision to wait on that part of it because I believe their, facil their uh, facility committee, their subcommittee, is looking at proposing some changes to the gym. So we've put that section on hold, but the other sections that are in green are the addition that you're sitting in that connected the high school to the old junior high, to the middle school. So this is the area that needs the new roofing. Um, it is out of warranty. Um, typically, we can do some patchwork here or there and extend the warranty, but there are no more extensions. Um, so we put it out for bid, um, and these are the bids that came back. I believe last year when we did the roofing project, we got three bids. And this year we received six. So I was happy to see that number increase. Um, these bids are for the actual labor. And we would, as a district, buy the materials. So um, Keith has the, the list of materials. Um, he'll take and, and start bidding some of that if it's approved. And uh, we'll order the materials because we can get a better discount than letting them actually get the materials. Um, so the first bid, we asked for the bids two ways. Um, if the work was done in the summer, what would your bid be? And if we started while school was in session, what would your bid be? Um, because we felt like we could do some maneuvering if we had to, let's say, start in April, and we could make it happen if there was a big enough discount. But uh, the first bid was Frederick, or Frederick Company Incorporated. Their summer work was 92450 School in session, their bid was 91250 the second bid was from Jim Taylor Incorporated. Their summer bid was 81,677. Their bid for work during, uh, while school is in session was the exact same. The third bid was Shea Roofing. Uh, their summer bid was 71,257. Their bid for the work uh, while school's in session was 68,694. Then uh, bid number four was from Kerber Company. Their summer bid was 58450 and that was the same price as they did it while school was in session. Uh, Barch Roofing Company, and Barch is actually the company that we worked with last year to do our roofing. Um, Barch's summer bid was 69800 and that was the same price as they did it while we were still in session. And then the very last bid we opened was Lakeside Roofing. Their summer bid was 105488 and their bid while school is in session is 101488 um, Keith and I talked about it. Um, he's worked with Kerberg before, and so our recommendation would be to go with Kerberg and company to do the roofing this summer. Um, so I, move, I would suggest, recommend that we accept uh, their bid, they've met all the requirements set forth in the legal notice requesting bids. Um, their base bid was 58540 We also asked for a replacement of damaged insulation, um, which we don't foresee any of that, but we always have to ask for it just in case it comes up. Um, and it's 450 per square foot per inch in depth. Um, they included the bid bond of 5% and they can complete the work it's actually 60 days, not back, 90 days. I missed that. So where, that they, where are they from? Um, I don't have that information. But Keith's worked with them before. Keith has worked with them. Um, they've been around a long time. Okay. And Keith was at St. Anthony's Hospital. They actually did roofing projects for St. Anthony's in St. Louis. Um, St. Louis. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, St. Louis. Thank you. That's a big difference. Yeah. 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 It's weird. Yeah. So the range is 58 to 105. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they have offices in St. Louis, Kansas City, and Springfield. When they, I know we have Keith's mm -hmm. recommendation, but when they submit a bid, do they have to submit any sort of references? No. no. When we open the roofing bid, I apologize, I can't remember the company that we work with. They actually do all the spec work and they send it to us. So they come in and inspect the roof. Um, 
tell us what needs to be done. Um, they do this kind of work everywhere, and so we really rely on what they have to say about the companies too. Okay. I'll move to accept the following bid for roof weatherproofing to be completed with a contract done. I'll second. With Kerber Company. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Next, we have action for a closed meeting. I move that the Board of Education hold a closed meeting with a closed record and a closed vote following the regular open meeting on February 18, 2020, to be held in the R.W. Thomas Library, 715 Washington Street, St. Denver, Missouri, for the purpose of discussing and voting upon the following items today. Hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting state employees. Scholastic probation, expulsion, or graduation of identifiable individuals. I further move the notice of this meeting and its tentative agenda be posted as required by law. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call, Harry Foster? Yes. Dave Bowman? Yes. Don Hook? Yes. Jim Kirchner? Yes. Jeremy Daniel? Yes. Are the Reese here? Yes. Richard Rudolph? Yes. Motion carries. Have a note. Next, we have a motion to close session. So moved. 